Good morning and welcome to my channel. My channel is called Beauty with Love and I am Leah Love. If this is your first time here, I'm so glad you are joining me. If you, this is your returning, thank you for returning and how are you doing? How's everything? I hope your new year was great. We're going to talk about dermaplaning. Dermaplaning is a very common thing and has just recently pretty much taken off in the net last, I don't know, eight years or so, which is pretty recent when it comes to skincare. Um, a lot of people call it face shaving. It is and it isn't. Now you are taking off what's called the vallus hairs, which are the very fine hairs that kind of collect the powders and things when you're putting on foundation or setting your foundation. It might be why it doesn't look as smooth. Everybody has these. Don't be alarmed or unhappy. I have been doing this for a very long time and I am 40 years old and I have yet to grow back darker hairs because of doing this. So do not be alarmed by the superstitions or any of the rumors behind it. But everybody is different. I will say that the darker the hair it is better to remove it with not a your typical leg shaving razor. What I would use is a face razor. I would use a face razor. These are made for defuzzing the face. Some of them are called defuzzers. Some of them are called just face trimmers. Some of them are called like face toucher ups, things like that. Uh, you can use them to shave your eyebrows. You can use them between your eyebrows. You can use them all over your face. I use them on my daughters, um, all of them, and even the six-year-old because the six-year-old has very full brows, and the last thing you want is your child to get made fun of for a unibrow, but she has beautiful brows. All I do is just shave right between there so that she does not end up with a unibrow because like I said, I don't want her to get made fun of and you know how kids can be these days. And so I just shave right between there and she has yet to have it grow back any thicker. Along with my 15 and 14 year old, I do the same thing. I clean up their brows with it. They haven't quite got into that. So anyways, the, this is super easy. There are other things out there that are more pricey, um, like the Dermaflash. It's uh, more electronic when it comes to shaving your face. I may eventually move into that, but I actually really enjoy just doing this, and it's very satisfying to see the results. Your skin looks so much smoother and everything like that. So the first thing you do is you take out a fresh, um, or whatever you want to call it and you start razoring your face. Keep it kind of sideways because you don't want to go like this because you can cut yourself. We don't, that's, that's not comfortable. And you'll see that it doesn't work that way really. You have to turn it sideways and then even though I look like I don't have any type of hair on my face, I actually have little vallis hairs and it's very interesting to see the results. Okay, so this part of the video is going to be a little bit different because I had filmed the whole video yesterday and then deleted half of it, unfortunately. So that's why I'm in something else and my hair is different. So we'll go ahead and start off. We have our defuzzer in our hand and dermal planning is actually very, very, very easy once you get the hang of it. What you want to do is make sure your skin is taut. Now some of you who are younger probably won't have to like tighten anything. Me, I don't really have to tighten anything because of skincare and taking care of my skin. That, that's why my skin is still pretty taut even though I'm 40 years old. So what you want to do is start with it angled toward your skin but um, flat against it. And then you just start like barely little tiny strokes and bringing it down. Now yesterday I'd gotten much more hair off. Let's see if I can get any hair off today. But like if I but I missed any places. But 
what this does is it creates a very nice smooth surface for your application of anything really your serums your moisturizers your foundations and most of all your powders because powders can cling to every single hair you have no matter invisible or not it becomes visible I like to do my neck just because if you ever notice yourself in pictures if you look over here you'll see little fuzzies that's the same ballast hairs I actually really enjoy doing this because it makes my skin feel so soft and it leaves a beautiful glow plus it gets rid of any random hairs that try to pop up in your skin. All I'm doing is moving my hairline out of the way so I don't end up shaving my hairline. This is a great way to touch up your eyebrows in between waxing or even to just trim them yourself at home. As you can see, I barely have any eyebrow over here. That's just simply how my eyebrows have always grown. My mother's the same way. She has very fine eyebrows on the side and no, not much here. But I still touch up right here. It's just nice. Gives a nice little clean look. Remember to stay away from this area. Do not dermaplane this area. This is too thin of skin. Fragile, minus puffy and dark right now. But yeah, please do not do that area. It's very sensitive and fragile and very thin. Same thing with your eyelids. These places usually don't grow hair, so there's no real reason for you to be dermaplaning over them. You're not really gonna do anything for you um, aesthetically or any youthful. You don't really, you don't need to exfoliate under here. You don't need to exfoliate your eyelids. It's just not really healthy for them, okay? They're really fragile pieces of skin, so please be careful when you're doing this. Just avoid those areas. Um, up here is fine, of course, because that's where your bone is. And you could see, even to tell the difference between this skin here and this skin here. It's very fragile here. That's why we want to nourish it and hydrate it and take care of it the best we can. Um, anyways, so dermaplaning is really, really easy. It's another way of um, exfoliating. And I would definitely say if you're going to... Dermaplane, dermaplane once a month, and don't do it after or close to when you actually exfoliate. Some people exfoliate daily, some people exfoliate twice a week, once a week. You know, I definitely suggest as we get up in age to start exfoliating, you know, once, twice, three times a week, depending on your skin sensitivity. Also, if you have acneic skin, you're going to want to get what's the appropriate type of exfoliant for you, even if it's something that you need to do perhaps through a dermatologist. You just want to make sure what you have what's right for you. That goes sometimes with any skincare. I personally know my skin, and I use things like Adrian Arpel or Dermalogica. They're also cruelty free, and I really have, I've used Dermalogica forever. So I really love things like their pre-cleanse. I still have it in, I love it in the pump. I have it in the tube in my, my shower. Uh, it, that's the bomb. I like it because it takes off everything really quick. And that's what you wanna do. You really wanna make sure that your skin is very clean before you dermaplane. Because otherwise you're just taking off like makeup and all this stuff and you're really not doing what you need to do for your skin. Same thing goes with any type of exfoliation. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up if it was informative or anything like that. Go ahead, leave comments below. I love hearing comments or you can also contact me at any of my social medias, which is um, on Facebook under Beauty With Love or Instagram, Beauty With Love. 
I look forward to seeing you guys next time and have a wonderful day.